everyone, welcome to the course on medical biomaterials. Uh, now we will start a new topic that is called ceramics. Ceramics is also a medical biomaterial just like uh, metals, polymers both synthetic and um, natural. Ceramics are finding lot of applications because uh, they have a very, very uh, useful property like uh, osteo integration, bio recognition and so on actually. As you know bone contains a uh, uh, lot of ceramics. In fact, uh, the material the bone is made up of uh, hydroxyapatite. Hence, ceramics uh, oxides, different types of oxides like alumina, zirconia, they are all finding applications uh, in the area of uh, medical biomaterials as a spacer, as a filler, as a coating material and uh, so on actually. Okay, if you look at bioceramics, alumina that is aluminum oxide is a, a ceramic material which finds lot of application. Zirconia for example, okay, zirconium oxide, silicate glass that means a SiO2. So, they are different types. Then calcium phosphate that is the appetite. Okay. Uh, in fact, our bone contains lot of this calcium carbonate, hydroxy appetite. Okay. So, all these are uh, ceramics which are finding lot of application. In fact, this picture is of hydroxyapatite. Calcium sulphate, it is used quite a lot in uh, uh, orthopedic for filling. For example, this picture if you can see, uh, there is uh, uh, filling which needs to be done. Uh, so, they use uh, calcium sulphate and some of the bone uh, ground bone material and they fill it up here. So, not only it gets integrated, uh, it is highly biocompatible, it prevents uh, bacterial infection uh, and so on actually. So, these uh, biomaterials, these bioceramics um, are extremely biocompatible and they can be nicely integrated especially in dental applications, in orthopedic applications. Of course, they have certain shortcomings especially um, they uh, cannot take a tensile force. Um, and uh, they do not have a crack propagation uh, resistance. So, these are some problems of the, uh, these type of material, but um, then uh, they have quite a lot of advantages which are now being uh, exploited in the area of uh, biomaterial. So, we will look at uh, some of these um, in this uh, particular class. So, lot of advantages, they have a high compression strength, they have good wear and corrosion resistance. So, uh, for example, if you take metals, chances are either there could be oxide corrosion or bimetallic corrosion or wear corrosion whereas, these material do not wear so easily. They can be highly polished, they are bioactive, bio inert and uh, osteo integration properties all these are advantages of uh, bio ceramics. Now, of course, it has some disadvantages high modulus, so mismatched with the bone, okay, the modulus has to match with the bone otherwise you end up having stress shielding. That is why nowadays uh, titanium based material alloys are coming where the um, modulus is coming closer and closer to the bone. Low strength in tension, it just cannot take tension, it will just snap. Low fracture toughness, that means if there is a crack, uh, it propagates very fast and the material will break. Whereas, if there is a crack in a metal, it, it has got very high fracture toughness, the metal will still survive for a very long time. Difficult to fabricate. Okay, so, metals, polymers can be fabricated to any shape, size, dimension, but uh, these are a little bit uh, more difficult to fabricate. So, these are some disadvantages of that. Okay. Um, they are bioactive, they integrate very well as the name implies osteo, so that means with the bone they integrate very well. So, they form a good bonding between bone and material will be formed, a chemical bonding. Whereas, if you put in an inert material, um, then uh, it will be separate, the material and the bone will be separate, uh, so they do not integrate. Whereas, the ceramic material integrates very well, they are bioactive like hydroxy appetite. Okay. Uh, there is a good contact between bone and the implant, so osteo integrate um, especially like titanium. Okay. So, ceramics have all these good properties. Um, if you take alumina that is Al. 2 O 3 zirconia that is a zirconium oxide and carbon or bio inert. Okay. So, um, they do not cause any adverse reaction to the host system. If you take a bio glass or glass ceramics, bio glass that means SiO 2, 
silicon type of material, they are bioactive okay, that means they take part in the integration process. If you take calcium phosphate ceramic, they are bioresorbable that means they will completely disappear over a period of time. So, if I am going to use it for filling, bone filling, uh, when the bone starts growing this will completely get uh, resorbed or if I am using it for scaffolds it will get completely resorbed. Okay. So, that is beauty of uh, calcium phosphate. Bioglass and glass ceramics they are non-toxic, they chemically bond to the bone. So, they do have good advantages. Okay. Um, if you take glass ceramics they could have osteoinductive property. Okay. So, that means uh, they will allow cells to proliferate. Um, calcium phosphate ceramics like I mentioned exhibit non-toxicity tissues, they get bioresorbed and they also have osteoinductive property. Zirconia ceramics, okay, uh, they are bioinert and they are non-cytotoxic. Carbon, carbon is also used nowadays, they have good mechanical properties of the bone, they elicit blood compatibility, no tissue reaction and non-toxic to cells. Okay. So, carbon is also very, very good which can be used uh, in some biomedical applications. So, you see um, a lot of these properties come into picture, bioinert if you are interested or if you want to bio, if you want to have a osteoinductive property or if you want osteointegrative in property, okay, we can if you want bioresorbable property then we can have different types of ceramics. Uh, this particular um, table I showed long time back com comparing ceramics, metals and polymers um, as you can see hardness ceramics have very high, metal have low, uh, polymers are very low. Elastic modulus very high, high polymers are low, high temperature strength, high low very low. Thermal expansion it does not expand at all whereas, metals will have very high thermal expansion, polymers also can have. Ductility it is very, very low because uh, we cannot uh, make shapes out of it ductile. Corrosion resistance ceramics have very high corrosion resistance when compared to metal or polymer resistance to wear again it is very, very high. Electrical conductivity it may because you can have uh, ceramics with conductive and or non-conductive properties. Metals high and of course, polymers low. Density it is very low, metals will be high, polymers will be very low. Thermal conductivity it can have thermal conductivity just like electrical up or down, metals will be high, polymers will be low. So, uh, this table gives a very nice uh, comparison between uh, all these three major classes of uh, biomaterials. So, this picture if you see uh, stress strain diagram metal you will have the elastic region then the plastic region, polymer as you can see it can go like this, ceramics whereas it will have I modulus, uh, it will have very, very uh, poor crack propagation, I mean it will have very high crack propagation. So, it does not, it is not tough, so it does not take attention. Okay. So, it cannot be used in such applications, it will just snap here. You do not see a plastic region at all unlike metals, okay, that is the stress strain diagram. Uh, this is also a very interesting uh, picture taken from this reference. Um, if you compare the Young's modulus versus fracture toughness, as I mentioned what is fracture toughness? If there is a crack that is developed, um, how long can the, metal, uh, the material last or if the crack starts propagating very fast and the material fails, that is called crack fracture toughness. Okay. It has got this particular uh, units mega Pascal meter per half as you know Young's modulus as giga Pascal. So, if you look at uh, um, materials okay, like eggshell, hydroxapatite, silica, ceramic, they do have good Young's modulus, compressive Young's modulus, but their fracture toughness will be very low. That means, if there is a defect or a crack that is formed, the material will fail immediately, I mean comparable to your bone or dental material. Whereas, if you take metals like nickel, chromium, stainless steel, they have very high Young's modulus very high fracture toughness. Zirconia of course, uh, not bad, it is coming up in fracture toughness, okay, but um, these are the metal area, you have uh, um, amalgams, then we have titaniums. So, if you look at zirconia uh, or uh, bio silica based material or bio glass, they have um, quite high fracture toughness when compared to the rebinding ceramic material like bio glass, ceramic, calcium phosphate, silica hydroxapyrite. So, eggshell you can see it is got very, very low fracture toughness. We are all used to that right, if there is a crack immediately it fails. 
you are some of your bone material high density low density cancellous bone or have very low Young's modulus as well as very low fracture toughness. So, um, the fracture toughness of most of the ceramics are low uh, whereas, the compressive Young's model uh, for strength is high. Um, once again this picture you can see um, this is a material ductile material this is a brittle material this is the bone brittle fails before permanent deformation like ceramic ductile deforms greatly before de deformation bone can exhibit both ok. So, brittle material will not show any ductility it will fail ok. Um, this is an interesting table again because uh, we are comparing different materials with your bone as you can see bioglass tensile strength is comparable to the bone elastic modulus is also ok. Um, poor fracture toughness compressive force strength is very very high. Hydroxyapatite if you look at it it is also comp uh, comparable to cortical bone compressive strength is very high elastic modulus is also high fracture toughness is extremely low. Alumina uh, you can see here uh, stainless steel if you see the fracture toughness is high elastic modulus is very high when compared to your bone um, titanium of course. Uh, um, is much less than your stainless steel, but still even that has very high elastic modulus when compared to your cortical bone ok. So, this table compares different uh, met metals as well as uh, the um, ceramics like uh, hydroxyapatite, alumina, bioglass with the bone ok. This was taken from this uh, particular reference ok. So, um, these uh, biomaterial ceramics are widely used uh, mostly in dental and uh, in um, orthopedic application like uh, total hip, uh, artificial total hip, knee, high density alumina, metal, bioglass coatings. Basically, they are coated so that the metal on metal uh, um, interaction does not take place which may lead to debris formation, metal leaching and so on. Bone plate screws they are all coated with bioglass polysulfone carbon fiber composites. If you look at intramedullar nails again this is an orthopedic I showed long time back we can have bioglass coating rods permanently implanted artificial limbs again you have bioglass carbon fiber composite vertebrae spaces alumina spinal fusion bioglass allovelar bone replacement mandibular reconstruction we have PTFE porous alumina bioglass dense appetite and osseo tooth ok this is teeth related alumina, bioglass, dense hydroxyapatite, orthodontic anchors, bioglass, coated alumina. Again you see um, as you can see generally uh, bone related places, um, fillers, coating and then some teeth related, tooth and orthodontic anchors and so on. This uh, information is got from this particular reference ok. So, uh, once again we can see alumina, zirconia, graphite, carbon different hydroxyapatite, bioglass, glass. So, Young's modulus um, varies a lot ok. So, very low vitreous carbon, pyrolytic carbon ok, hydroxyapatite 73 ok and going right up to you know alumina 380. The compressive strength if you look um, carbon uh, is comparable to the bone material where hydroxyapatite is quite high ok. So, these uh, table shows you uh, how each uh, um, oxide varies and carbon seems to have reasonably good properties when compared to the bone. Um, hydroxyapatite uh, comes here ok and uh, your uh, bioglass comes here 75, but it has got a very high compressive strength ok. So, let us look at a uh, little bit on each one of these uh, biomaterial um, the oxides that is the alumina aluminum oxide it is called Al2O3, uh, it is got a density of uh, 3 bulk uh, modulus compressive strength. This is used as a biomedical uh, material early 1970s in both high density high purity polycrystalline and a single crystal forms actually ok. And this is the range of densities or modulus or compressive strength. It is used in osseous tissue in growth to stabilize prosthesis in the skeletal system, polycrystalline alumina and sapphire in dental application. So, as I mentioned uh, mostly you will find uh, in fillers 
uh, bone replacement, coatings in the orthopedic and in uh, filling in the dental. Uh, calcium phosphate ceramics is called CPC, it is used uh, bioceramics as hydroxyapatite okay, and beta tricalcium phosphate. So, calcium phosphate is used as a hydroxyapatite or beta tricalcium phosphate. The hydroxyapatite as the chemi chemical formula we have the calcium, we have the phosphate and the hydroxyl group generally the calcium to phosphate phosphorus ratio will be 1.67. So, um, again calcium phosphate hydroxyapatite as you know um, is widely used in bone filling because uh, the bone is predominantly calcium phosphate. So, the osteo integration um, happens very very comfortably. If you look at uh, zirconia, zirconia is finding a good application of late, uh, it is got very good mechanical strength and fracture toughness because uh, the rest of the um, ceramics have very poor, poor fracture toughness whereas, zirconia is quite good. So, um, it is used in the total hip replacement THR total hip replacement ball heads ok. There is a, um, there is a ball and socket uh, you may have metals metal on to in order to prevent metal on metal they may coat it with zirconia. Um, so, it prevents the wear and also it is got good osteo integration property. So, it integrates very well with the um, bone uh, tissues ok it is very biocompatible. So, total hip replacement ball heads, total hip replacement acetabular inlays, total hip replacement condyle, finger joints, spinal spacers, humeral epiphysis, hip prosthesis. So, all these places where uh, you have a uh, uh, ball and socket type of moving um, zirconia friends application. So, alumina and zirconia have very good uh, applications in uh, orthopedic and dental applications, but zirconia um, is coming off of late because it has got uh, much better fracture toughness than any other um, ceramic bioceramics. Bio glass, uh, when we say glass it is mostly silica that is why um, it is all generally you will find a silica based material ok, SiO4, 4 minus they have found places in prosthesis actually. They are embedded in a biomaterial support to form prosthesis for hard tissues. Such tissues are biocompatible, they show excellent mechanical properties and are useful for orthopedic and dental applications ok. And bio glass is generally silica based different types of combinations of silica will be present. So, you can also think of um, composites made of bio inert and bioactive ceramics. So, each can do certain activity. So, we can achieve bioactivity and uh, bio inert can give you the mechanical strength ok. So, composites of uh, these uh, inorganic materials are also being looked at actually. So, alumina ceramics are used with hydroxapatite. So, hydroxapatite may have poor properties, alumina may have better properties whereas, hydroxapatite is bioactive ok. So, we can combine these two properties to form composites. Of course, we can even think of coating. Uh, metals with hydroxyapatite or bioglass so that you get uh, good uh, osteo integration and uh, bioactive property when compared to the metals. Again um, we can prevent uh, um, atmospheric uh, oxidation related corrosion of some metals by coating hydroxyapatite on top of metal joints. So, there are so many options available where by bringing in ceramics into the picture of uh, um, biomaterials ok. Let us look at one uh, simple problem uh, in the area of uh, the ceramics ok. Um, imagine we have a stainless steel here, it is a rod used uh, in say orthopedic application. This is a 10 millimeter diameter stainless steel rod, it has got a Young's modulus of 200 giga Pascal strength, yield strength of 300 mega Pascals, density of 7.9 gram per cc ok. This is the stainless steel. So, they coat it with 1 mm thick bioglass ok. Bioglass has got a good uh, integration property, uh, stainless steel may corrode also. So, I assume you are coating it with 1 mm, Young's modulus is 300. So, as I mentioned uh, it can it is quite uh, Young's modulus can be very high for ceramics, um, but then it does not uh, da, does not have a uh, plastic uh, region at all, it is got 300 mega Pascal fracture, density is 4.5 grams per cc. So, um, it, it just uh, 
okay, fractures as soon as it reaches this. So, there is no uh, ductile region at all for ceramics. Now, the question is what is the Young's modulus of this composite? Of course, we can use this uh, mixture rule right E 1 V 1 plus E 2 V 2 is equal to U 1 A 1 plus E 2 A 2 that is V 1 is volume fraction, V 2 is volume fraction. So, we can put the uh, areas into the picture area fraction, area fraction. Okay. Um, okay, so, what do you do area of the stainless steel rod it is a 10 mm diameter stainless steel rod. So, pi r square is the area pi into 10 mm dia. So, 5 um, mm is the radius okay, 10 power minus 3 multiplying to make it into meter square. So, you get meter square. So, we have 3.141 into 25 into 10 power minus 6 meter square. So, the area of the stainless steel rod is pi into 25 into 10 power minus 6 meter square. We are converted into meter square because uh, we, are, we have this Pascal, we want to bring it there. Uh, 10 mm is the dia, so we made it 5 mm. Now, you, you have 1 mm thick coating of bioglass. So, how do we calculate the area of this bioglass? Um, in school, you must have studied, we calculate the area of this big one, okay, area of this one and subtract that will give you. So, pi um, big one r square minus pi small one r square. So, by big one r square minus pi small one r square. So, now big one is it is a 1 mm coating. Okay. Its radius is 5, so it becomes 6. 5 plus 1 is 6, 1 mm thick. Now, this inside is of course, 5 here. right? So, 5 sorry pi into 6 10 power minus 3 raised to the power 2. This is for converting into meter a minus area of this rod which is 5. So, when I do this 6 square is 36, 5 square is um, 25, 36 minus 25 is 11, 10 power minus 3 square is 10 power minus 6. Okay. So, you get a area of bio glass that is this portion as pi into 11 into 10 power minus 6 meter square. Area of the stainless steel rod is pi into 25 into 10 power minus 6 meter square. So, the Young's modulus we can calculate um, a fraction right uh, 200 is for the stainless steel uh, 25 is the area divided by um, 25 plus 11 is 36 that is the fraction of area and then uh, the Young's modulus of uh, Young um, this bio glass is 300 area is 11 total area is 11 plus 25 26 sorry 11 plus uh, 25, 11 divided by 36. So, this 200 comes for the stainless steel, um, the area of stainless steel is 25, the total area is 25 plus 11 that is 36, plus the 300 comes from the Young's modulus of the bio glass, area of the bio glass is 11 divided by total area is 25 plus 11 36. So, when we calculate that we end up with 230.5 gigapascal. So, the Young's modulus of this composite is 230.5 gigapascals. Okay, we use the mixture rule, and um, so uh, Young's modulus of stainless steel into volume fraction plus Young's modulus of uh, bioglass into volume fraction. So instead of volume fraction, we can use area fraction because we don't know the rod length. So it doesn't matter. Uh, so area fraction is area of the stainless steel divided by the total area. Um, here area of the bio glass divided by the total area. Total area is area of uh, stainless steel plus area of the bio glass. So, 25 plus 11 that is why we have 36 here. Okay. Now, the second question is what is the average density? We can do it in the same way with the density of uh, uh, stainless steel is given here, density of uh, um, bio glass is given here. So, we can do the same thing 7.9 multiplied by 25 by 36 plus 4.5 multiplied by 11 by 36. Okay, we use the same approach area fraction, area fraction for stainless steel, area fraction for uh, composite. So, that comes to 6.86 grams per cc. Okay. Here we use mixture rule uh, which is uh, like uh, uh, both contribute uh, based on their volume fraction or area fraction, but in real case it might not be so actually because if you remember there is another rule called Roy's rule we studied long time back where it is the equation is slightly different. So, you may get a slightly different answer if you use that particular rule. 
Okay, let us proceed with the problem. Um, same problem, what is the maximum strain the composite can carry? So, we have now uh, a stainless steel rod uh, which is coated with bioglass and imagine it is pulled. Okay. Um, so, what will be the strain? Both of them will have different strains depending because the Young's modulus is very different. So, how do we calculate the strain? So, we do um, stress by strain is equal to Young's modulus. Okay. Um, so, stress divided by uh, the, the Young's modulus. Okay. So, we have uh, uh, the for the stainless steel uh, 200 is the Young's modulus giga Pascal. So, we convert into Newton uh, by meter square okay. for the bioglass uh, it is 300. So, 310 power my raised to the power 9 um, Newton per meter square okay. and um, imagine we are putting in stress of 300 okay. because stress by strain is equal to stress by strain is equal to Young's modulus. Okay, if the, mm, this is the stress. So, we divide uh, this stress by the Young's modulus good to get the strain okay. and um, same stress is divided by the Young's modulus to get this uh, strain. Okay, so, we end up with the maximum strain for stainless steel is 1.5 into 10 power minus 3, um, maximum strain for bioglass is 1 into 10 power minus 3. Uh, but then uh, um, maximum strain the composite can take will be the lower of these two because by, um, by the time when the strain reaches one, um, if it slightly exceeds the composite will fail because bioglass will fail. So, the material can take um, lower of these two which is equal to 1 into 10 power minus 3. Okay? Um, so, that is the maximum strain the composite can take. Okay, so, uh, how do you calculate this strain? As you know, stress by strain is equal to um, the modulus. So, stress by the modulus is equal to the strain. So, imagine if you are applying a um, stress of a certain value, uh, this is the modulus for stainless steel, and uh, this is the modulus for, uh, for uh, this, uh, this one, okay, by your glass. So, we end up uh, with that, okay. And so, how did we take, why did we take this 300 and uh, this is the yield and here also um, this is the fracture. Okay? So, the numbers are same. So, we put this this here, but the modulus is or moduli are different. So, we will end up with different strain values and as I mentioned, we always have to take the lower of the um, two strain values because it is a composite. Um, once it reaches this value, the composite material will start failing. Next part. What is the maximum load the composite can carry in the axial direction? So, we will assume this as our strain, okay. maximum load the composite can carry in the axial direction. Okay. Load as you know force by area is equal to stress. Okay. Uh, so, stress is the modulus into strain. So, stress for stainless steel is equal to, so we have uh, um, 200 okay, into 10 power 9 we will use this. So, this is 1 into 10 power minus 3 for the bioglass. Okay, we will take uh, the modulus 300 and 10 power 9. Again, we will take this as a strain. Okay, so, we end up with two different stresses. Okay, the stress is given by this relationship. Force is equal to stress into area okay, uh, for stainless steel. So, we take this as the stress and this is the area. If you remember last time we calculated for the bioglass, Mm, this is the stress, this is the area we calculated. So, we get this particular the force on stainless steel will be this, the force on bioglass will be this. So, the combined uh, force will be some of these two. So, it is 26.1 kilo Newton. This is the combined force uh, this particular material can take up. Okay, so, you understand this problem. So, um, as you know you may get different strains, but the point is we have to take the strain um, which is the lowest and then use that in the next step. Okay. So, we calculate stress is equal to modulus into strain, this is the strain. So, we end up with this stress for stainless steel, stress for bioglass, force is equal to stress into area, we calculated this these two area from the previous slide. So, we get different forces, when you add up this gives you the combined force 
okay, maximum load the composite can take in the axial direction. Okay. But then there is a problem generally we cannot use bioglass with stainless steel, why can you tell me why it is? They have a different uh, coefficient of thermal expansion. Okay. So, stainless steel has much higher, so if there is a change in temperature it will expand whereas bioglass will not expand, so there will be a crack. So, there will be a poor bonding um, between these two material that is one point, another one is uh, um, there will be very different uh, thermal expansions. So, when there is a change in temperature your uh, stainless steel will expand, bioglass will not expand, so it will break. And then of course, uh, bonding between bioglass and stainless steel is also very, very poor. Okay. Thank you very much for your time.